All right, folks, I'm back, and I'm going to show you the source code for this uh, TFT animation engine. And uh, we'll just start at the top here. You're going to have to get these libraries from Adafruit in order to operate your TFT touchscreen. And you're also going to need the SD.H library. I'll post links to all those libraries uh, in my Instructable. All right, here's some default settings, uh, mostly Adafruit settings. My TFT is different and uses other settings, my Uno R3. So you might want to pay attention to those settings right there. You might need to change those for your uh, particular TFT screen. Again, more defaults. <clears throat> Here's the Adafruit defaults. Here's my settings. Uh, these are your calibration settings. You're going to want to pay special attention to these. Uh, you can get this data operating this in the debug mode. And you open up the serial port and it'll print out the raw coordinates, which you can use to put here for your uh, calibration. Uh, you want to make sure you do this because a lot of these little buttons here, the, the grid, they're small. And if you don't, there's going to be some inaccuracy in the touches. And I noticed that a lot, and it took me a while to get it fine-tuned. But finally, I found out it was, wasn't so hard to do it if I, I had the right information at hand. Anyways, I'll show you how to get that information later in debug mode. All right. Keep on going down here. you got your min pressure, max pressure, more touchscreen settings, your uh, touchscreen object, some colors to find for the touchscreen. <clears throat> some 8x8 setup. And this is your main screen array. This is the data that is going to be printed out on your touchscreen. In fact, right now, as I touch this thing, it's filling up this array the appropriate information, uh, the right color number, and sending it to the LED matrix. Now you'll notice that uh, this is a 9 by 8 grid in a sense. I've got an extra dummy line down here and you need this otherwise you'll have this strange glowing line at the end. Uh, it took me a while to figure out how to get rid of it and that was how. Anyways, I'm not going to go into the details of that. It was a little bit of a headache getting it fixed, but, you know, um, finally got it working okay, and I'm not too worried about it now. So, <clears throat> keep going here. These are just uh, different buttons, and I've got all the different regions defined. Uh, it's just easier to do it this way. That way, when you go to draw it out, you just draw out... Um, the values here you don't have to like if you want to change a button I can change the position of the button here and it'll move the button and the touch events will still work everything's still gonna work because it's defined here and not in uh, hard-coded numbers throughout the code which would probably be less memory intensive but uh, this is just a lot easier to program with in my opinion all right We've got some more settings here. This is just for the rounded corners of these buttons, the radius there. Y star is just sort of uh, helps me helps you start printing in the right spot. And then it's easy to have a va uh, value. And then you can just increment it easily uh, for line spacing. Here I'm going to increment by 10. And these little grid boxes, uh, they're about well, when it pops back up, they're about 23 pixels square. Uh, these are for different states. You've got your delete pop-up, you got your screen clearing pop-up, and your file manager pop-up. Here, I'll show you a couple of those right now. So let's say you go to delete this thing, and you get this little confirmation pop-up. You really want to delete this or not, so you don't accidentally do something like that. Uh, same thing with uh, clearing the screen here. You hit that, yes or no, I'm going to say yes, let's clear the screen. Clear the screen in, and then there's the file manager. That's going to pop up this menu where you've got all your different files you can choose from, all your different animation scenes. And uh, this will get you out of the file manager up here. So <clears throat> those are the different uh, pop-up events, so to speak. Now here, here's the color definitions for the uh, LED matrix. It's different than for the TFT. You're only going to send uh, these numbers to it. You've got your 
six, seven numbers if you want to count white and black. And these are just more default settings, current LED color, uh, frame delay, uh, loops, you can change these things if you want to. I don't recommend changing the uh, LED color, but the frame delay and loops, if you want to change the default, go, go right ahead. Try some different things. Uh, these are defaults you don't want to change. This is the, the file location and the first file that's going to initialize and the directory. And we keep on cruising down here. Uh, we got some more settings, just default setup settings. Now we get down into the setup loop. Alright, so this is just pretty much a lot of the stuff that came from the TFT paint program. I just left it in there almost verbatim. Changed a little bit, just prints out the driver chip. And it gives you a little bit of information on startup. And when you get down here and it starts initializing some of the buttons and the boxes and gets the 8x8 set up and down here it starts up the SD card. If you don't have an SD card in there, it's going to tell you, hey, there's an error, there's no SD card here, check your SD card. You get down to the loop uh, routine, you got your touch point here instantiated, and we take it down here and see if we've got enough pressure to do a touch event. And if we do, we're going to transpose our raw coordinates into coordinates that will work on the screen, 320 by 240 type coordinates instead of like 200 and 900 maxes. This is uh, checking for different states. If you're in the delete pop-up state, it's waiting for a confirmation or a cancel click, and it's not going to do anything else. Same thing with the file manager. If you're in the file manager uh, pop-up, it's going to be waiting for different things. You want to create a new file, it's going to print out the, uh, the list of files, <clears throat> so that you can click on them. Get down here some more states, clear the screen. That's just to clear the screen as I showed you earlier. Just puts another pop-up up there. Yeah, let's clear the screen. And it's kind of giving you a better idea of how things are going on this. And come down here. This is just to say, hey, if uh, any of these states are occurring, don't do anything else. Let's just get out of this loop. Come down here. And file monitor buttons. If any of these have been pressed. Uh, we're going to do a uh, pop-up of the file manager, or we'll close it, save to your SD card if that was pressed, uh, play if that was pressed. Sorry, my cats are going crazy right now for whatever reason. And uh, these are your up and down buttons for the speed. So your delay, basically, you can change that. You also got your up and down for loops coming up here. And the little message it prints out up here in the screen. And basically speed up, speed down, which is a delay. And loop up, loop down. This is setting the number of loops that are going to be run. It would be nice to have an infinite loop thing, but you'll have to have some sort of uh, way to break out of the loop. Right now, once you play it, it, you can't really break out of the play mode. It has to finish. <clears throat> Alright, this is just setting up uh, the paint, these uh, color picker boxes up here. And deciding if one, if one was pressed and what to do about it. Basically changes the current color. And we get down into here. And this is basically uh, filling up the array, for the screen array, and it's also printing out the uh, box. So we're uh, filling in the box on the TFT and filling up that array and then down here we send that data to the uh, eByte. Alright, create new file function. Hopefully that's self-explanatory. Come down here and if you don't have an, uh, 10 files already it will allow you to create up to 10. And when you first start out, uh, you'll just start out with one file, and you'll just keep filling it up until you've got all ten. And make sure anytime you open a file, you want to close it. Otherwise, you're going to run into uh, issues that can be hard to debug. Uh, memory issues, and possibly even, uh, well, you can't really open two files at the same time, so save yourself some headache and uh, close anything you open.
All right, continuing on here. This is the show file manager routine. Hopefully that's also self-explanatory. And that when you click on the button, it pops up the file manager. It says, okay, do we have the directory? Is the SD card there? And if it is, it uh, rolls through the directory and prints out the files that are, are there. Set color button number. This is for the picker buttons up here. It just sets the text color and number for those buttons. Send bit is sending the data to the 8x8, the actual flipping of the bits. And send data from array. This has been talked about a little bit already, but uh, this is just going through and setting each row, to turning them all off, and saying, oh, should we set it up to uh, be red? Or what about a combination of a couple colors? Or turn it off? What are we going to do? You keep going down. You got all your rows getting printed out here. And start SD. This is just the initialization of the SD card. Uh, if you're starting out, it'll create everything for you to the first file get you rolling so you don't have to actually copy files to your SD card to get this thing working. It'll do all that for you. Play all. Hope that explains itself a little bit. It's just going to open up the file and uh, grab all the data <clears throat> and start playing it out. So this controls the number of loops that gets played back. Get into show frames here and that is going to take you down to this routine. And this basically reads through each character of the data and prints it out on the screen and gets it set up to print out on the 8x8 by filling up the array, the screen array, as you can see right down here. And uh, you can uh, you can uncomment these lines to try some different drawing modes. It will slow down the playback quite a bit because this prints it out character by character. This prints it out one row at a time. And the way it's set up right now, it, it's printing it out uh, frame by frame. So this is going to be at 64 uh, drawing events and 8 as opposed to 1. So it's going to take a lot more time. But you can go ahead and try and comment those out and have a little fun with that. And getting down here, this is just basically uh, controlling the frame delay. So if you've got uh, high or low delay, this is where that is uh, being timed out. Or no delay, depending on what you want. And again, make sure you close every door you open in the program. It's just good practice. And also, you see a lot of these rotation things. I'm, you always want to make sure you, if you change your rotation, set it back when you're done. Otherwise, you're going to have all sorts of strange things happen, like these print out horizontally, these letters print out horizontally, but these ones are vertical due to rotation shifts. You just want to make sure you uh, be orderly about that. All right, we get down here to delete all, and what that does is basically deletes all the frames in the currently open file. And let's see, we'll get, a, uh, we'll get one I don't mind deleting here. And we got zero frames there, so I'll just create couple frames, boom, 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 save, 